who do I want to be versus who am I now? And how do I bridge that gap? How do I show up as this person with a scaled business, with a bigger business? Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. My name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss an episode out every Tuesday and Thursday. Today, we're going to be starting a new series about scaling your business. Um, We actually, when we wrote down this episode, we wrote it down as, do you want to scale your business to the tune of, do you want to build a snowman? If you know, then you know. Um, I, I, Melissa, I've been singing this in my head like, I know. all day. <laughs> ever, ever since we planned this episode, I was like, do you want to scale your business? No, okay. I've been singing the snowman one because oh. it's it's so engraved in my brain from my nannying days. I I will never be able to run from Frozen. I can't ever. I can't hear it. Any, like every time I hear it, I think about this episode now because I had I had it planned out for so long. Like as soon as we wrote it down, I was like, man, that's a that's it. This is golden. That is gold. I, I like. I wish we could, we could meet with the people at Disney and uh, come up with our own version of it. I already yeah. thought about it. I was like, yeah. how far do I want to take this? Do I want to write out all the lyrics? I thought about it before this episode. If if for those of you that don't know, which is all of you, because this was something that we did internally, um, I wrote a song called "The Twelve Days of Taxmas." Um, I think maybe oh like my two God. or three years ago. Were you part of, did you see that? I think I posted it in BBL. Yes. Um, yes. And maybe, this, maybe the stay-at-home mom group, maybe the main group. But um, I do have full-on lyrics, guys, on the 12 Days of Tax Mix and a video of me singing it. So I'll have to bring that back around um, during the holidays and share that again. Yeah. Wow. That's that's dedication. That's that is truly dedication. That is that's called ADHD and procrastination, is what that is. Because well, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to be doing but something you were, else. But you were dedicated. And <laughs> yeah. You were. You saw it through to the end. I did. I did. Dropping on dropping on SoundCloud this Christmas. Yes. Um, but no. Today we're going to be talking about do you want to scale your business? Um, and well, honestly, we the answer is yes, absolutely. But we're we're going to be kind of dipping our toe in the water of scaling your business and what's required and some tips to kind of bridge that gap of wanting to and actually doing it. Um, Melissa, when did you scale your business? So actually, funny story. So back in 2017, um, for those of you that are newer, Ben actually had like an original BKX, like the OG BKX. I can't remember. What was it called? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember what it was called because I wasn't working for the company yet, but I remember it. Yeah. And so we, we went to that. It wasn't, it wasn't as big as BKX is now. And um, I went with Daniel and it was the first bookkeepers.com event I ever went to. And I was very confused as to why anyone knew who Daniel was. It was hilarious. Cause I was like, why do these people know you? And he's like, oh, you know, I post in the Facebook group, like our progress sometimes. Um, like I legit, it was so weird. Cause everyone's like, oh my God, it's Daniel Honan. They're bookkeeping for painters. And I was like, this is so weird. Anyway, I was, I think five or six months pregnant at the time as well. Um, and so Ben was speaking on, um, do, like basically do you, want to keep your business small or do you want to grow a mini empire? Like he had like these like three different stages of your business, what it could be and then determining what you wanted to do. And I remember like leaving the conference and we were going to go get like a drink or something. And Daniel's like, what, you know, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, I think I just want to like keep the business small. And I was like, what do you, what about you? And he was like, oh, I want a mini empire. And I was like, oh, that sounds hard. (laughs) And, um, Oh, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm pregnant. I'm tired. I have this, his feet are in my ribs. Um, I don't want to do that. And, uh, anyway, so long story short from that day, that's when we decided that we were going to grow a mini empire. And, uh, I was like, Oh, I did it reluctantly, like everything, but I'm just like, I'm that person. Like I do everything like a little bit reluctantly. So, um, but yeah, I I distinctly remember it was like Ben's talk about like, what do you want a mini empire? And Daniel was like, yeah, I do. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll grow it for you. (laughs) I guess I'll do that. And then, and then I did, and I'm going to be talking about that at a BKX too, but, um, basically my desire to like double the business and then double it again, and then just keep doubling it until I don't feel like it anymore. That's, that's literally my strategy, guys. It's like, it's not some big complex. It's like, I'm just going to double it and then I'm going to double it again. And then I'll guess... I'll keep doubling it until I get bored. 
<laughs> so I think, I think when it comes to scaling your business, you have to, the, I think the first step is kind of actually taking a step back and saying, okay, who do I want to be versus who am I now? And how do I bridge that gap? How do I, how do I show up? as this person with a scaled business, with a bigger business or with a mini empire or with a whole empire. It's like you kind of have to show up personality wise first. I think that's like the first step. And I think that has a lot to do with trusting yourself and kind of trusting the universe, but also being prepared to be uncomfortable and to work really hard. One that we are on the same wavelength. And to kind of call back to the episode we just did, we were on, uh, for those of you that haven't listened to it yet, go follow the Ambitious Bookkeeper. Um, You know, we were just on uh, Serena's podcast and we were just talking about, um, yeah, you just got to show up even when you don't want to, even when it's hard. Um, that consistency, again, you know, we were just talking about this in originality in your niche, that consistency and patience with it is a big part of it. But, um, you know, how do you bridge that gap? Like 100% Hannah, I like figuring out where I am now and where I want to go. That's exactly what I did is I knew where we were. I knew where I wanted to go. And what I did is I just wrote down the steps to get there. And it as, as easy as that, I literally was like, okay, I need to do this, 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 and this. All right. That's just 10 things. Um, and I worked down that list. And if I could, I don't want to make it sound like flippant, like it wasn't hard. It was super hard, but the only way I knew how to do it was just, again, putting one foot in front of the other and being consistent. I came up with a plan and then I proceeded to follow that plan. Yeah. Well, and I think you have to, I I think a lot of it is preparing for growth and, but having an actual plan, um, and not really, I don't think scaling your business is, well, I guess I shouldn't say this, but I personally think that maybe scaling your business isn't the best time to wing things. Um, I I think you, I think it's great to maybe get technical, take this opportunity to get organized and really create a business plan or hire a business coach to do it for you. I think that's a great investment. Um, if you want to scale your business is to have someone kind of mentor you along the way so that you can be organized. And I think the more organized you are, the less overwhelmed you're going to be with facing growth because growth is all around. It's initially just uncomfortable. There, there's always going to be things that you're going to wing, like no matter what stage of business you're in, right? Because there's, you're, there's going to be a new scenario and you're going to be like, oh crap, I don't know. And then you're just going to do something, right? But 1000% what you're saying about being organized, like you need to have your basics down. Like if you don't have your bookkeeping process written down, like do not scale your business. Like you, just write down what you do first, because what's going to happen is as you scale, you're going to need to hire. And in order to hire, you're going to need to teach those people what to do. And you're just going to make your life so much more hard hard, like so much harder if you can't even just give them a written process for just the basic of tasks. Like, and so there are going to be things that you wing and I wing things sometimes still to this day, but the basics, the organizational foundation of your business needs to be in order that, that needs to be done. And you can do that side by side as you're scaling, but don't forget that part. Like I I've been there where it's like, oh crap, I should have done this six months ago, but I didn't. Now I have to do it now, but I still have to do it. Don't let that stuff get away from you because it'll make things a lot harder when you get to the top. Today's show is brought to you by Keeper, the one app to run your bookkeeping business. Keeper helps you get faster client responses with your own custom branded QuickBooks integrated client portal. Finally, You can say goodbye to those pesky spreadsheets full of uncategorized transactions. Keeper also helps you catch those embarrassing coding errors before your clients do. And with Keeper, you can generate beautiful custom reports that your clients will absolutely love to read. To find out more, go to keeper.app. That's keeper.app. Mention I Love Bookkeeping to get 20% off your first three months. Again, go to keeper.app to find out more. Thank you for listening. Having systems in place and having a process in place, that that's walking before you run. And I think that scaling is more of in the run sprint category. That's more of like the marathon running category. 
And what you don't want to do is start running before you walk and and lose yourself in the disorganization of, well, yeah, I want to scale my business. I want to grow. I want to delegate. But I also don't know what I'm doing with my own personal processes. I think you kind of have to get down a routine before the growth happens because that's, I mean, I, and that kind of, I try to like apply that in all aspects of my life. I feel like is before anything new comes along, I'm like, wait, no, I have to establish this first. But I think having your systems in place, having your processes in place and really getting them down a hundred percent, totally efficient. That needs to happen before growth happens, because then when you grow, you're just going to be a shit show. So I'm going to respectfully disagree. Okay. And that it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but you have to be honest with yourself and those that you're working with if it's not at a hundred percent. And so a good example of this is for us, I delegated our onboarding of new clients. So I still do the sales, but I hired a position called our client success manager to help onboard clients because it was, I I couldn't do all of it. I couldn't do everything anymore. And we wanted to scale and I did it. And I did not have a process for this position. And, but I told them up front, I said, Hey, this is a new position. I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. And I, there's a lot of things I haven't really documented because at the time there were three of us that would do onboarding of new clients. And we all did it a little bit different. Like we had a documented process, but just in the nature of things, we did things a little different. So I hired that position and it was like, as a caveat, (laughs) I don't know what your position is yet. We're going to figure it out as we go. But I was upfront about it. So that's the difference is there's people, they hire positions and they're like, yeah, we're going to do this and this and this, but they don't say, hey, it's a shit show. Like upfront, I was like, y'all, I, this is going to be a mess, but I'm hiring you to help me clean up this mess. Um, so I will say that there are times where, where you can do that. And then even then, you know, again, we, we scaled really fast. And as, as the reason why you do want to get your processes done is I will say that we basically took two steps forward and then we took two steps back because we ended up losing a lot of the clients that we onboarded because they were not onboarded properly. And we did not give them a good onboarding experience and it made them think twice about our services. So there's kind of the warning. There's the red flag for you again, is that it's not just going to affect you. 1000% your clients will feel if you were a mess and you don't have your basics down. And we didn't. There's been times where we grew too fast and we weren't able to sustain that growth with our processes. That is, that's, I feel like that's like, I could just preach about that for Ooh, man. I could. Ooh, yeah. I, I have their names written down. If y'all want to talk about it one day, I, I literally, I literally remember this. I remember all of those clients too. Cause I was like, man, you know, I, um, you know, I knew, I know what we did wrong back then, but that's the thing is that we were able to fix it. So we haven't done it again. So always that you're going to make mistakes. Even if you do the things right the first time, you're still going to make mistakes as you do it, but you have to learn from it and get better over time as well. That's yeah. I feel like everybody has worked for somebody who has been extremely unorganized and it shows. Um, and that is kind of, it's a frustrating feeling as an employee. Um, so I imagine that it's more of a tailspin for the employer, but it's, it's, it's tough because you feel like you don't really have a say in what's going on, or you kind of don't know you don't know what your next step is and you don't really know what, how you can grow in that position from like an employee standpoint is if, if the processes aren't down, if, if you want to, if you're, if you're being hired, but you kind of don't know what you're being hired for, it's frustrating. Yeah. And I, that's why I say just communicating and being transparent about it because even if you have your processes down, I'm going to tell you right now because I've been through it, that as you scale your business, those processes need to evolve and you have to keep up with modifying those processes. As I started at $18,000 a month in monthly recurring revenue, in a year, I doubled to over $40,000 in revenue. And then I doubled the business again to 80, I think $84,000 in revenue. And then now we're up to, um, 
we, we got up to about 115,000 in monthly recurring revenue. And then through my choice of offboarding some clients that we probably should have never brought on and a combination of, you know, um, kind of repositioning, uh, how we were going to serve our clients right now, we're at about 98,000 in monthly recurring revenue and every single stage of that, our processes had to be completely redone. Um, complete, like every step of the way we had to transition and evolve because you go from a bookkeeping team of three to four to a bookkeeping team of 12 to 20, that's going to put your processes to the test. When you have two to three account managers, but you need five to six, again, it's going to be a completely different environment and a complete, and and you're going to learn like, as you bring on different types of clients, as you bring on more clients, things are going to change. And so you have to modify your processes as you go along. And I think the thing here is uh, being as transparent as possible with your team, that as your business scales, it evolves and you have to have people that are, are comfortable with that. Right. And if not, you, you might have to realize that your company might outgrow those people because you have to decide, do I want to tread water and stay in place? Or do I want to swim to the other side of this lake? And if you're swimming and someone's holding you back, they might not be a good fit for your company. And the best way is to be as transparent as possible with people on your team, what your goals are and make sure that their goals are in line with yours as well. Well, and I think that can come into kind of the, the uncomfortable growth. Um, that's part, like, I think that can be one of the more painful parts of growth is when you have to discover something that maybe you're not totally comfortable with yet, or you discover that, hey, this isn't working anymore. I need to do something different. Um, that I think that's one of the most, that can be uncomfortable. And I think that can be one of kind of the more negative, I shouldn't say negative, but one of the more painful parts of scaling your business and growing is realizing that you've outgrown certain things or you've outgrown certain people. That is the hardest part. And that is the shittiest that part. That is the shittiest part, guys. And I, cause it's happened to me a couple of times. And I, I tell you right now, every single time, and if there's anybody listening that this has happened to, so I'm speaking to you directly. If I have had to fire you, I want you to know that I definitely cried afterwards. Like 1000%, even if it was like a situation where I was like, I was like, yeah, we need to fire you for sure, which doesn't happen very often. That it's only happened a couple of times. Like if I've ever fired anybody, I have immediately cried afterwards. <laughs> like oh, it man. is not, it's not fun. And because I have always seen that if I have to let somebody go, if it gets to the point where I have to let you go, I feel like I've failed you. And that's not oh. necessarily true, uh, you know, because you can, and I know in certain instances, it was not true. Like where I have given everybody everything I could give them and they still just could not get it together. Right. But I, I do always take responsibility for it and realize like, could I have done something different? Could I have onboarded them better? Could I have provided more yeah. training, more one-on-one support? Should I have started um, giving them written counseling sooner? Should I have, you know, what could I, could, could, should have, would have, whatever. At the end of the day, I always feel responsible and I always cry afterward. That is the hardest part. Yeah, that's tough. And it's, it's part of the uncomfortable part of scaling your business. But I think that when you do decide to grow, when you do decide it's time to grow, that's kind of something that it's like, that's the tough pill that you have to swallow Yep, is that you can't take everybody with you. It's you necessary. can't take all your ideas with you and that it's totally necessary. Um, did you find that when it was time for you to grow your business or when you go through periods where it's time to grow, um, do you have like a business coach that you lean on or like a mentor that you lean on for um, insight? <laughs> Uh, not for what we're doing, um, in a sense. Well, I will say that I do talk to one mentor now. Um, we haven't, I, I didn't know her really when I was growing the business before, but now I get to talk to her and it's kind of nice to see someone that's been there before, but no, I didn't have that. My business coach is actually not in the industry and I relied on her more for, you know, um, everyone's heard of me talking about her. She's more of a communication consultant. She doesn't really do it anymore. She doesn't take new clients, but she's still my business coach. And, um, she helps me work through, um, more of the operational challenges of dealing with people and having difficult conversations, which for me is something that I needed more um, than, oh, you know, what do I do next? Like I, I, for me, I always feel like I'm, I'm a natural leader and I, I'm, I'm, especially with, with Daniel, we're, we're very well planned out and have good 
you know, processes in place and plans in place for what to do next. So I feel, I don't want to say I've always known how to grow this business, but I, I did. I, when I came back, I was like, okay, I'm going to double the business. I'm going to double it again. And I know how to do it. And then I did those things and I, I, I keep doing it. So for me, I, I, I just know what I need to do. A lot of it was like, just listen to Ben. Um, like a thousand percent. Like if Ben tells me to do something, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, because he's great at that. He's like, you need a niche. All right, we, we niched. Yeah, great decision. Uh, I would never not niche. Um, but what I need help with are more of like the internal runnings of the business and having conversations with people because I always think that people are the one thing that you cannot necessarily control. You can control how you respond to things, but I can't control what other people do, right? And so that to me is the riskiest part of business is the people that are involved in your business and then the people that you're working with as far as clients. And that's where I have a coach to help me with that aspect of of the things that I cannot control, how to respond to those things. Mm, that's a great thing to have a coach for. I it literally like, I didn't even know this existed. Um, it's so funny because I was actually friends with her before I used her services. And then I was like, oh yeah, what do you do? And she's like, oh, I, I do this thing. And I was like, what kind of magician are you? Um, it, it, yeah, communication consultants exist guys and they're wizards and I highly recommend them. Highly. Mine's just, mine's just called my therapist, but I, that's, I mean, she's, she's that. basically a business therapist, like a thousand percent because it's like, okay, you say you have two employees that are fighting with each other, right? Like it's that type of thing where it's like, how do we do this? Like it, she's really like a business therapist and it is so necessary. So necessary. Mm. Like I've, we've had her, I, I've had her mediate calls between people before because I was like, I can't have this conversation alone. Um, I don't think I have the tools to do it. And then I, I, I you know, at, that was at the beginning. And then, so she would mediate calls and help guide the conversation, just like couples therapy. Um, and then I grew into a place where now I can have, ha- I can have tough calls and I'm pulling things out of the toolbox that she gave me through the work that we've done together over the years. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Um, if you guys have comments, questions, concerns, or you want to hear more about scaling your business, uh, please shoot us an email at success at I love bookkeeping.com. Again, that is success at I love bookkeeping.com. Don't forget to subscribe to us. We have new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. You don't want to miss out, especially because, you know, we're just, we're so fun. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for tuning into the I love bookkeeping podcast. My name is Hannah Robinson and I'm Melissa Honan. Thank you for listening. I love bookkeeping. Ah! Here's a little shout to all my friends working hard at keeping the books. You want to change your life? You want to grow?